Alright guys, so today I'm going to finish up chapter 4 and hopefully we'll have enough time to read through all of chapter 5. The place Mac hung out in was mostly boarded over. Only one window was open, and that had a big cardboard ad for cigarettes on it. Over the door there was a sign. Not a real sign, but the kind somebody who couldn't print straight had just painted on a piece of wood that said, Video Games. From the street, the place looked pretty dark. Jamal had been there before with Randy. He knew it was a crack house. They messed with the stuff in the back, and then the teenagers took it around to sell. Inside, two guys were watching cartoons on television. One of them was wearing a beeper. Jamal nudged Tito and nodded toward it. The beeper probably meant that guy was a runner. That's how Randy used to make money sometimes. You can make a lot of money running crack. You just had to be sure you didn't start messing with it yourself. There were two video game machines on one side of the small store, which had once sold groceries. A few dusty cans of vegetables were spaced unevenly on the dusty shelves. Jamal looked at Tito. Tito's eyes were kind of wide, but he was there. That was the way Tito was. He got nervous sometimes, but he wouldn't let you down. What you boys want in here? A heavyset man leaned across the counter and growled the words out. I'm looking for Mac, Jamal said. Mac who? Mac from the Scorpions, Jamal said. He ain't around here, came the gruff reply. Where he at? I ain't his father. I didn't say you was. You better get your fresh ass mouth on out of here. Jamal looked at the older man. Then he turned slowly and started out the door. You want to wait around and here a while, Jamal asked Tito, in case you come around? I don't know, Tito said. What time is it? You can go on. I don't care. I'll wait with you. They waited near the curb. Jamal leaned against a silver-gray Mercedes, and Tito sat on the curb next to him. Jamal knew he didn't want to talk to Mac. Mac was nothing but some trouble, like Mama said. He was the second oldest of the Scorpions, too, but he didn't act like it. He acted like he was in the third grade or something. It wasn't what he did so much, it was the way he talked. Jamal couldn't figure out why Randy even liked him. Just before the jury had come back from Mark making up their minds, and they called everybody into the courtroom, Randy had spoken to Jamal in the hallway. He said a lot of stuff about Jamal being the man of the house and how he had to take care of business if things went wrong for him. They ain't got no case, really, Randy was saying. Jamal remembered Mama looking away from Randy. Mama was dark, like he was, and Jamal could see the tears running down her face. When they told them to come into the courtroom, the lawyer had to help Mama in. Randy already knew things were going to go wrong for him because he did the stick-up and killed the guy. He had said Willie did it. He had said he and Willie was just walking in to buy something when Willie pulled out his gun and said it was a stick-up. Mac had said the same thing. Willie had said he wasn't even there. Jamal was mad at Randy, real mad, mostly because of Mama crying and everything. When she got home at night from the trial, she would just sit and rock and sometimes cry. She prayed a lot, too, but that didn't help. Sometimes Jamal got mad at God, but Mama said he shouldn't be. God didn't shoot nobody, she said. When the lady from the jury said that Randy was guilty, Mama started crying right out loud. Jamal had looked at Randy. He was looking cool. Jamal hated that. You weren't supposed to be looking cool when you made your, mo when you made your mother cry. How long you think you're going to be? Tito asked as they sat in front of the boarded up store. I said you can go if you want to, Jamal said, and walked over to the Mercedes. Tito stood and leaned against the car next to Jamal. I'm not going, Tito said. I was just thinking, that's all. A short, stocky man with a square head, dressed in a gray suit and a pink shirt, start started into the store, then stopped and walked over to Jamal and Tito. Why you got to lean on my sheen? Jamal looked at the car, then got off of it. Tito moved, too. The man pushed Tito and almost made him fall. What you got to do that for, Jamal said. Jamal let his eyes move away from the man for a moment, then saw the big hand coming toward him, and it felt and felt it smack across his face. Catch you on my sheen again, I'm going to mess you up bad, you hear that? Jamal looked for something to hit the man with. 
One of the teenagers who had been in the store, the one without the beeper, came out and stood next to the man. Tito had moved around the car, and Jamal, the taste of blood in his mouth, backed away. Why you let people mess with my sheen? The, the short man turned and snarled at the teenager. The teenager, a tall skinny kid, backed away quickly from the shorter man. He looked over toward Tito and Jamal with anger in his eyes. The teenager followed the man into the store, and Jamal looked for something to throw on the Mercedes. Hey Jamal, what is it? Jamal looked up to see Mac, wearing the black and gold jacket of the Scorpions, headed toward them. Chapter 5 Mac wanted to walk over to Marcus Garvey Park, but Tito said he didn't want to go to the park. Jamal didn't want to go into the park with Mac either. Instead, they walked over to 116th Street. There were winos sitting on one bench, and Jamal, Tito, and Mac went to the other. When you get out, Jamal asked. Last week, Mac said. This guy I know, he was going from Spofford to Greenhaven, and I told him to look up Randy and tell him I was out. Randy said you turned him, Jamal said. No, man, I didn't turn him, Mac said, shaking his head. Me and Randy always been tight. Willie the one done turned him. They got Willie on possession, and then he tried to cop him a plea by turning Randy and me. Only when they got me, I told them the truth, just like Randy told me. Willie done all the shooting. He was high. Randy told him not to get high, but he got high anyway. If you didn't turn on Randy, why you out? They let me cop because I told them Randy and Willie was in there. Randy ain't mad about that, because they got the ID from the other lady who was in the store. I told them Willie did all the shooting. Tito was sitting on the back of the bench. He had his head back and his eyes narrowed. Yeah, that's what you say. Jamal looked down toward the playground at two small girls in the swings. That the truth, Max said. Randy said I should come see you. His lawyer called me and told me that he can make an appeal for $2,000, Max said. You know I ain't got that kind of dust, man. If I had it, I would shoot it on down to the lawyer so he could make the appeal. 2000 Jamal remembered Mama saying that Randy needed $500. Who he? Mac nodded toward Tito. He my homeboy, Tito, Jamal said. A red bus pulled up to the bus stop outside of the park, and a heavy lady got off. When she stepped down onto the sidewalk, Jamal saw that her legs were bowed. Her ankles were almost bent to the ground. Randy say maybe I can get the money from the scorpions, but the scorpions can't do no business if they mess with Randy, Mac said. How come? Because they don't want Randy out because he's too old. They don't want nobody 17 or like that. If they have all young dudes like you and your homeboy here, then they can't get you to testify or nothing. Randy, he old. The man get him. Then he got to turn somebody. I ain't got nothing to do with the scorpions, Jamal said. I don't run with no gang. You take over the scorpions, then you can get the money for Randy's appeal, Max said. Randy told me that if he go down, you got to take his place. Take over the scorpions? Yeah. Randy say they can carry for the Spanish guys over near 96th Street. They can make the money easy. Jamal glanced over at Tito. Tito looked at him and then looked away. The scorpions ain't just turning over their gang to me, Jamal said. Yeah, yeah, they will. If I got your back, they got to give you some slack because I'm the Mac, Mac said. I'm still the warlord. They don't mess with the Mac. You go in and you say you're taking Randy's place, then I got your back, and everything be cool. Jamal watched a small group of pigeons strut around a half-eaten corn muffin on the ground. A sparrow landed in the middle of them, poked at the muffin, and then hopped away as a pigeon pecked at him. You his boy, why don't you take over the scorpions and get the money up? Jamal asked. That ain't what Randy say, Max said. I'm only twelve, man. Jamal sucked his teeth and looked away. You be 21 with what I got for you, Max said. I got the heat karate can't beat. Miss 357 and a ticket right to heaven. A blind man with a seeing eye dog crossed St. Nicholas Avenue. Jamal watched as the man followed the dog across the street. The dog looked happy, looked happy taking the man around. I gotta think about it, Jamal said. Randy said you got the heart. Yeah, he got the heart, too. Look where he is. 
I got your back, so ain't nothing to worry about. You and me is tight just the way me and Randy was. Yeah, you be around here tomorrow? I gotta go see my parole officer tomorrow. I be around the next day. Okay. Jamal stood up. I see you around then. How much you say he gotta have? Five hundred, two thousand, Max said. What you mean, five hundred or two thousand? Yeah. Yeah? You want me to bring that thing with me when I come? No, not yet, Jamal said. Me and Tito got a split. We see you outside the game room the day after tomorrow. I be there. Jamal started walking uptown. Tito followed behind him. The wind was picking up, and it carried torn pieces of Kentucky Fried Chicken bag against his legs and dust into his face. He walked onto 8th Avenue without saying anything. They went up 123rd Street to the drive, and then to the Greystone apartment building where Tito lived. How you feel? Tito looked at Jamal. Okay. Don't look sad, okay? Tito straightened Jamal's collar. If Abuela, if Abuela see you looking sad, she's gonna start asking questions and going on. Yeah. You mean a gun, right? Tito said. When he say he gonna bring something, he mean a gun, right? Jamal shrugged. Jamal, I don't like that guy. He act like he's using crack or something. He always like that, Jamal said. He don't never act right. That's why mama didn't want him in the house. Why your brother like him? Cause he's stupid. Hey, try to look all right, Tito said as the elevator came. A dark-haired Spanish girl with a big dog came out of the elevator, and the dog barked at Jamal. Jamal jumped back, and the dog brushed by them. Your dog ain't nothing but a mutt, Tito said to the girl. On the way up, Tito asked Jamal what he was going to do, but Jamal just shrugged again. He didn't know. Abuela said they had to eat. She warmed up some noodles and chicken, and they ate it with hot flatbread that Abuela made on top of the stove. It was good. Then they went to Tito's living room and started in on the homework. Tito had his comics under one of the pillows. They did part of the homework and started looking at Tito's comics. You can't take over no scorpions, Tito said. They got guys 14 and 15 years old. They're too old and too tough. They ain't gonna listen to a kid. I don't know. Mama was talking about getting some extra work to get the money for the appeal. $2,000? She said only 500 something like that. If we could carry packages from the A&P, we, we could make maybe $5 or $7 a day. Tito wrote down five or seven on the border of a comic. That's $12 if you make seven and I made five. That's every day $12. Then how many days we gotta work to get, 5, 000, to get 500? You mean carrying packages on Saturdays and Sundays too? Yeah. That's twelve dollars into five hundred dollars. It don't even go it don't it don't go even. How you know? I don't think it go even because the last numbers are different. Jamal figured out how many days it would take him how many days it would take him and came up with forty one days. Abuela came in with cookies and little soup bowls. She asked Jamal if he played guitar, and he said that he didn't. Abuela was the same color as Tito, and her eyes were just as dark but they didn't seem the same as Tito's. Abuela's eyes had creases in the eyelids and they looked old. She always seemed happy, but she never smiled. To Jamal, it was almost as if the old woman had a thousand things to do and never enough time to do them all. Jamal took the bowl of cookies and thanked Abuela. That's not too long, Tito said after Abuela had left. It's a little more, but that's about how long it take. We might as well do that, Jamal said. They do everything so slow anyway. He was only 17 when he got in that robbery, and then when the trial come up, he was 18 already. I think that's better than messing with the scorpions, Tito said. I gotta make sure how much money they need for the appeal. How are you gonna do that? Call up the lawyer? I had to do that once when they first started out because we had to know how to get to the courtroom. We can make more on weekends, and it won't even be that long, Tito said. Suppose we got lucky and carried this real heavy package for a rich lady. Then she say, oh, here's a hundred dollars for each of you. No, suppose she say her husband's a lawyer and he'll do the appeal for us if we carry her groceries all the time. That could happen, Tito said. Yeah, but you know where that gotta happen? In one of them big white stores downtown. Abuela came in again, this time with milk, and called Tito. 
Pito Gordito. Tell Jamal what that means in English, Abuela said as she left the living room. What it mean? Little fat Tito. You want to finish the homework now? No. See, that's why I can't get my homework done, Jamal said. We're supposed to be doing it and you don't want to. You want to finish it now? You didn't want to finish it first, Jamal answered. Okay, I'm going to tell the teacher if she calls on me, because most of the time she don't call on me, that a crazy mugger took my homework. Why a mugger going to take your homework, Jamal said. That don't make no sense. See, I said he was crazy. They both laughed. I gotta go, Jamal said. But your grandmother is right. You're getting as fat as a girl. I'm not that fat. You're getting kind of fat. Jamal, I don't think you should mess around with no gun, man, Tito said. When I think about that, it makes me sad. How am I going to tell the scorpions what to do? I don't know, Tito said. Randy, he got somebody. He shot somebody and killed them. Maybe they think you're going to shoot somebody and kill them too. Guess who I ran into yesterday? Who? Mac. Where you run into him? Mama put down the dish towel and turned toward Jamal. Over near St. Nicholas. What you doing over there? Just walking. Just walk in my foot. When do you think I was born? Sometime this morning? No, ma'am. I don't want to, I don't want you near that boy. You understand me, Jamal Hicks? Yes, ma'am. And I don't want his name mentioned in this house. If Randy wasn't out fooling around with that lame brain, you know he ain't right, don't you? He don't act right. So what you souping up to him for? I told you I just run into him. Don't you told me nothing, fresh mouth. Sassy came out of her bedroom and sat down at the table. What you want, Sassy? You said that we shouldn't have no family secrets, Mama. Sassy, you can stay out here, but keep your mouth shut. I wasn't going to say nothing, Sassy said. He can hang out with any kind of hoodlums he wants for all I care. Sassy, go to your room. Mama, all I said was, girl, if I take my shoe off, you're going to wish you had your hind parts in your room. Sassy shot Jamal a look and went to her room. Mama turned back to her cooking. She had spent nearly an hour washing the mustard greens, cutting up the steak of lean to put in them, and boiling pork tips in vinegar and water. Jamal didn't say anything more about Mac. What he wanted was to ask Mama for the lawyer's card so he could call him and find out how much it would cost for the appeal. It had cost nearly $700 for the lawyer to begin with. Randy hadn't wanted the public defender. There was a radio on somewhere in the building playing gospel songs. They got some gospel music on the radio, Jamal said. You want me to find it for you? Jamal, Mama looked over at Jamal and then looked away back to her greens. Then she went over to the radio, put it on, and started searching for the gospel music. After a while, she found it, took a step away from the imitation leather radio, then turned back to it and cut it off. What Max say, she asked. Nothing much. Boy, you got to know this thing is cutting into my heart like a knife. Now don't you play with me because I just cannot stand it. As God is my secret judge, I don't need to be played with. He said that the lawyer called him and said he needed money for the appeal, but he said it was $2,000. What kind of lawyer be calling him? That's what he said. $2,000? I thought about calling the lawyer and asking him. Mama started humming to herself. Jamal knew she was doing some heavy thinking when she started humming to herself. I don't know why Randy told you it was 500 and the lawyer told Mac it was 2000 Jamal said. One day it's $500, and the next day it's 2000 and the next day it's $2,000. Sorry. One day it's $500, then the next day it's $1,000, and the next day it's $2,000, Mama said with a sigh. They know you love these children, and you gotta do what you can. What else, Mac say? Nothing. Jamal. What I want to talk to him for, Jamal said. You just keep it in your head that that boy ain't had no upbringing and don't amount to two cents, and that's what God loves, the truth. You want to call the lawyer? I'm thinking about trying to borrow the money from Mr. Stanton, Mama said. Jamal turned away. The last time Mama borrowed money from Mr. Stanton to pay for Randy's lawyer and to buy him a new suit so he would look good at the trial, she had had to work for him almost six months for nothing to pay off the loan. I could get an afternoon job, Jamal said. You want to call the lawyer? Go ahead, Mama said. Where's his card? Mama went and got the lawyer's card from her dresser. 
Jamal looked at it, then started dialing the number. When he had finished, Mama took the phone from him. She tapped her foot and hummed while she waited for someone to answer. I'd like to speak to Mr. Addison, please, she said. It's about the Randy Hicks case. Hello, Mr. Addison? This is Mrs. Hicks. I'm calling about my son, Randy. Mama nodded as she listened to the voice on the other end of the phone. Behind her, Sassy was putting the pot on for tea. No, he already been on trial, Mama said. He got from 15 to life. He's tall and brown-skinned. Mama was listening again. They say he shot a man. Mama's voice dropped. She listened again. That's right, that's right, that's him. He said you told him he could get an appeal for $500 and... Mama motioned for Sassy to bring her something to write on. Sassy brought her a ballpoint pen and a piece of theme paper. I see. I see, and bring the money down to you? Mama nodded again and then hung up the phone. What'd he say? Jamal searched Mama's face. He say he don't know if, if I... He say he don't know if it can go through, but he can make an appeal. It's going to cost about $2,000, but he'll start it with $500. I thought Randy could get a free lawyer, Sassy said. Mr. Addison said he could try that if he, if he want, but he didn't sound like he had much faith in it, Mama said. And how are you going to say no if he say he think he might get Randy out? $2,000 is a lot of money, Sassy said. The lawyers got to get their money too, Mama said. What you going to do? Jamal asked. Got to try to get it together, what it takes, Mama said. Her eyes were shiny, and Jamal thought she might cry. Jamal, you mind making some hamburgers for you and Sassy? It's too hard on you, Mama, Sassy said. Jamal had never seen Sassy cry so fast over anything. It's too hard. One day, Mama's eyes looked far away. <laughs> I was walking downtown with Randy in my arms. I was waiting for a light to change when this white lady stopped and looked at him. I looked at her, and she was smiling, and I smiled back at her, and that was the best feeling in the whole world. You got a baby, and you hope so much for it. I'll make the hamburgers, Jamal said. Mama went into the bedroom, and Jamal could hear the bed springs under her weight. That was what the whole thing with Randy was doing to her, making her tired, making her just want to lie down and go to sleep. I hope Randy get out soon, Sassy said. I hope you don't never get out, Jamal said. I'm going to tell Mama you said that. Don't you tell her that, Jamal said. I will. If you do, I'm going to punch you in your face. I'm going to tell her you said that too, Sassy said. Mama! Go on, Jamal said. Make her feel worse. You don't care. What you want, Sassy? Mama's voice came from the other room. She don't want nothing, Jamal said. He waved his finger in front of Sassy's face. Don't you tell me what I want. Sassy's voice rose. Jamal heard the bed springs again as Mama got up. Can't you children get along for two minutes? Mama stood in the doorway. When she had her shoes off, she wasn't much taller than Jamal. Jamal said he hoped Brandy never get out of jail. Jamal, how you fixed your mouth to say something like that, boy? Mama's voice cracked and her face tensed so that Jamal could see her teeth. How you fixed your mouth to say that, boy? The tears were going down Mama's face, and Jamal turned away from her. I'm sorry, he said. Lord Jesus, Mama said. Lord Jesus, what is this family coming to? Jamal looked up at his Mama as his Mama went back into the bedroom. You ain't so big now, are you, Sassy said. Jamal looked up at her. At least I didn't say nothing to Mama to make her cry, he said. He went into the bathroom and closed the door. He took his pants down and sat on the toilet. The top of his leg spread out against the white toilet seat. It was true. He didn't want to see Randy again. Randy was always making Mama cry. Everything his brother did just seemed to be wrong. And Randy didn't even know how Mama felt. Or maybe he didn't even care. Jamal didn't know. He had got into trouble with the police before, and Mama had had to go to court and miss work because of him. Then what did Randy say when he come home? Some, j some jive stuff about how he was too slick for the police. Mama was crying all night long when they had Randy out in New Jersey in the youth house, and she had to borrow money and everything just to get him out. Jamal took some toilet tissue and wiped the tears away from his face. This mess was the worst, he thought. If Randy got out again, he was just going to do something more messing up. Jamal, Jamal just knew he would. Jamal, Sassy's voice, 
Get out of here. I gotta pee. Jamal thought about just ignoring Sassy, but then he figured she would just go she would just go in and bother Mama again, so he got up, pulled up his pants, and opened the door. Sassy was standing in the doorway. I'm sorry. Oh, shut up. You're the one that... Jamal shut Sassy up with a look. She went into the bathroom and closed the door. Jamal washed his hands and went to the refrigerator. There were three hamburger patties in a neat pile next to the milk. He glanced at Mama's door. He figured she wouldn't eat anything. He took out one hamburger for Sassy. He wasn't hungry either. All right, guys, so that is the end of chapter five. We made it. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to get through chapter six.